key principle to investing is keeping your expenses and taxes as low as possible. There's really three factors that control the return you get as an investor. The first one is what the market returns. The second is the expenses you pay. And then the third is the taxes that you have on your gains. Now, nobody can control what the market does. You and I make an investment have really no control if the market goes up or if the market goes down. But we do control what we pay in expenses. The other thing is we can control to a great degree the amount of taxes that we pay. Now, obviously, we can't control if Congress raises taxes or lowers taxes, but we can control when we're going to actually take those taxes. So we can time when we do it. So if you focus on those three areas, keeping expenses and taxes low is something that we can control. So here again are the three areas that determine your return as an investor. The returns of the market, which we cannot control, expenses, and taxes. Now, as we learned in principle one, the markets are very efficient. So these high-priced, well-educated money managers on Wall Street have a very difficult time to beating the market or beating their benchmark. So why pay higher fees to these folks when they have a difficult time replicating what the market can do? So what we do is we just invest in vehicles that merely track the market. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. And then of course taxes. Again, we can't control what Congress does, but we can control when we take taxes. So if you have losses, you take the losses to offset future gains. Or if you have gains in a year, you try to balance them when you have losses. Now the first area that you have to look at if you're going to try to reduce your expenses is the amount that you're paying your broker or planner. Now most commission planners and brokers will tell you things like, oh, you don't pay me any fees or I won't charge you anything. Now this is technically true because the mutual fund company or annuity company pays them. But how do you think the mutual fund or annuity companies come up with the money to pay the broker? They get that money from you through their expense fees. So the bigger the commission they pay the planner or broker, the higher the annual expenses will be on your annuity or mutual fund. Now here you can see kind of the average commissions that are paid. Most mutual funds, your commission planner makes five and a quarter percent right off the top, just for filling out the paperwork. Annuities pay even more, sometimes as high as eight to 10%. I've even seen them as high as 13%. Insurance products are very nice because they typically pay the entire first year premium to the salesman. And even some planners will charge an asset management fee of 1% to 2%, depending on the size of your portfolio. And if all you're getting is asset management advice, then that fee is awfully high if you're not getting other things like tax planning or retirement planning. And I do want to throw out a word of caution. A lot of planners out there are calling themselves fee-based. They do that because they want the word fee in there to make you think they operate like a fee-only planner. But fee-based and fee-only are not the same thing. Fee-based planners should also be called commission-based planners. In fact, most fee-based planners still derive 70% of their revenue from commission. And as we can see, these hidden fees really start to add up and they reduce your overall return. So if you want to start to reduce your expenses and increase your returns, you need to look at the fees that you're paying your broker or your planner because they have a big impact on your overall return. So we've seen from principle one that it's difficult to consistently beat the markets, even for the professionals. And this slide shows you exactly why. It comes down to expenses. Basically, there are two types of mutual funds that are out there, actively managed and index mutual funds. Actively managed funds have a person or a team of people who buy and sell stocks in hopes of beating the market. An index fund, on the other hand, has no one picking stocks in hopes of beating the market. An index fund merely replicates an index. Uh, most of you have probably heard of the S&P 500. It's the 500 stocks that represent the U.S. stock market. The news agencies always report on how the S&P 500 is doing. Well, the S&P 500 index fund merely holds the 500 stocks in the S&P 500. You don't, don't need a team of people to set that up. The only time it changes is when the S&P 500 changes. The biggest advantage of index funds is that they are much cheaper than the actively managed funds. And again, as we saw from the principle one, these active managers, these mutual fund managers and hedge fund managers 
can't beat the market consistently anyway. So why pay extra fees for underperformance? Now the way I keep expenses low for my clients is by using exchange traded funds or ETFs. They are essentially index funds in that they track an index, except these are traded on an exchange like the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. They're traded during the day just like a stock. Now the benefit to this over regular index funds is these have the lowest cost out there. These are the lowest cost vehicles on the market today. And again, this slide shows you the difference in cost between the actively managed funds that are out there and the ETFs, which I use. And as you can see, for each different asset class, you could add one to one and a half percent to your portfolio each year by using these index investments. If you really want to learn more about the inefficiencies of mutual funds, go to my website where I have a presentation on mutual funds. It explains exactly how they operate and why they're so inefficient. But in short, the mutual fund managers sell 80% of their holdings each year on average. This creates an enormous amount of capital gains. Every time these mutual fund managers buy or sell a stock, a taxable event happens. Also, the way mutual funds are organized, investors pay taxes when other investors sell. So if you and I hold the same mutual fund and I sell my shares, and the mutual fund manager has to sell positions in GE or Disney and that results in some taxes well rather than the taxes going to me because I sold they go to all the shareholders equally this means you pay taxes when I sell so you can see how inefficient that is now and according to a study published in the tax policy in the economy about one quarter of an investor's return in a mutual fund goes to taxes on capital gains and distributions each year this means if you get a 10 percent return you would only get 7.3% of that in your pocket with a quarter of that going to taxes and the rest going to expenses. Now index fund investors typically get to keep 90% of the return and only 10% go to taxes and expenses. So you can see by focusing on investments that track indices you can really add to your bottom line. You can put more money in your pocket. 